day everyone. Today we're going to discuss good day everyone. <laughs> today we're going to discuss Nantok Antok Pawalina Possession. On today we're going to discuss um, preparation na cash flow statement. I've already introduced this statement in the last video kasi ito yung wala dun sa basic accounting equation na video natin. So, ano ba yung dahilan ba't gagawa tayo ng cash flow statement? Yan nga, nasabi ko na uh, nung nauso yung accounting, hindi naman prevalent na utang ang transaction. Cash basis ang transaction nung araw. Wala kang pera, wala kang transaction, pero um uh, nag-evolve yung credit system at nagkaroon ng uh, ano ng malawakang pangungutang kumbaga na iba yung pananaw ng tao sa credit noon kasi negative ang impact ng tao may utang eh ngayon kasi pag wala kang utang ibig sabihin walang nagtitiwala sa iyo kaya wala kang mauutang so dito ngayon Dahil sa ganyang pananaw, evolution ng credit system in the world of commerce, um, kinakailangan na ng um, cash flow statement. Ang cash flow statement kasi, ipapakita niya yung dahilan kung bakit um, ganito yung balance ng cash mo. Kasi kapag ka cash basis yung recording ng system of recording ng business, yung cash net cash balance mo at the end of the period yun yung kinita mo sa pagnenegosyo so sa accrual basis kung ang accrual basis ay more on cash yung transactions nila at wala sila masyadong utang uh, magre-reconcile yung ending cash balance dun sa net income eh. kung cash ang kanilang ang uh, karaniwang transaction Pero dahil nga hindi na gano'n ang setup ng commer commercial world ngayon, mas marami na yung utang, kinakailangan na ng cash flow statement. Ito yung cash flow statement, ire-reconcile mo lang naman yung net income mo using accrual basis of accounting dun sa net income mo using cash basis of accounting. So, uh, na-introduce lang ang pag-require nito in 1987. So matagal. So in 1987 doon na nagsimula mag ano yung mga utang ng tao, lumaki ng todo yung utang ng tao. Uh, so yung accrual and cash basis nagkaroon na ng malaking disparity that is why kailangan na ng cash flow statement para ma-determine saan ba napunta yung pera? Saan ba nang galing ang pera? Saan napunta yung pera? Para binigyan ka ng pera pang malengke. Ito yung cash inflow mo. Saan mo ginastos? yun yung cash outflow mo. Ano ang natira? So, that is your ending cash. So, parang ikaw, namuhunan ka, eto yung pinuhunan mo, eto ang ginasos mo, magkano natira? Yun ang net income mo. Kung cash basis yan, di ba? Pero approval basis tayo, so kailangan i-reconcile natin yung net income natin. Explain natin, ang laki-laki ng net income natin, ang late ng cash natin, or ang laki-laki ng cash natin, ang late ng net income natin. What's the reason? So, kailangan, anong dahilan? Bakit gano'n lang ang income mo? O anong dahilan? Bakit ang liit lang ng income mo? O bakit ang dami mong cash? O bakit konti yung cash mo? Kasi cash alone, na malaki, in an accrual system of accounting, eh hindi natin pwede pagkatiwalaan na net income yan. Kasi nga, ako mo lang system niya. So, we have to reconcile. What is a cash flow statement or statement of cash flows? So, it is a financial statement that summarizes um, ang ating magic ball pen. It is a cash that summarizes the amount of cash and cash equivalents entering and leaving the company. So, in and out. Cash in, cash out. That explains the difference between the beginning cash and the ending cash balance of the business. Meron kang beginning, tapos along the way, meron kang natanggap at meron lang mabas. Anong natira? Bakit ganon? So, it is a financial statement that converts the accrual basis of accounting into a cash basis of accounting. That was what I was explaining a while ago. <clears throat> that measures how well a company manages its cash position. 
kung paano uh, or, or kagaano kagaling ang uh, management sa paghawak ng cash at pagbayad ng utang. Kasi i-maintain yung good credit standing. Kapag di ka nakakabayad, wala na magpapautang sa'yo. Yun yung sinasabi niyo. Kaya, kama, kaya uh, maraming nangungutang ngayon kasi eh, yun ang basehan ng magaling kang magbayad ni nagpapautang sa'yo. Okay. So, ito yung cash ledger natin. Or cash account natin. Meron tayong account number, heading ng account, page number ng ledger. Kapag, mara, kapag cash usually, marami, may page number yan kasi maraming cash transaction. So we have the date, the posting reference, the amount, that is the debit side. And then we have the credit side. We have the date, the particulars, the posting reference, and the amount. So we have the credit side. So itong, we have the beginning balance. And then we have the increases in cash, sales, unearned revenue, accounts receivable, issuance of common stock. And then we have the credit. We have the upper chase of property, plant equipment, payment of accounts payable, payment of salaries expense, payment of interest expense, payment of income tax. So this is the total. So the difference is, um, this is the difference rather, the total is 1 million, and ba ang total nito? So, ano ba ang total nitong dalawa? Ito ang total nito eh, because this is the heavier side, ito yung total nito. So, 1 million, 0, 4, 1 minus 5, 3, 0, ito yung total ng disbursements or payment. So, this is our our cash account. Ito yung i-analyze natin to come up with um, with the presentation of cash flow statement. Ito yung tinatawag na direct method. Dito ka mismo kukuha ng data mo sa cash account natin. Ito, ito yung uh, uh, more realistic, more accurate, or actually hindi naman more accurate kasi accurate din yung isa. Kaya lang, mas maraming details. Mas marami kang basis of analysis. So, a cash flow statement complements the balance sheet and income statement and is mandatory part of a company's financial report since 1987. Purposes of the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement allows investor to understand how a company's operations are running, where its money is coming from, and how money is being spent. The cash flow statement is important since it helps <clears throat> investor determine whether a company is standing on solid financial ground. Creditors, on the other hand, can use the financial um, cash flow statement to determine how much cash is available for the company to fund its operating expenses and pay its debts. So, with uh, cash flow statements represent the liquidity status of the business. Does the business have enough money to pay operating expenses and creditors? Components of cash flow statement. So, um, cash flow statement, uh, Remember natin uli yung equation natin. Asset is equal to liabilities plus capital. So, paano natin i-dissect yung mga accounts na ito to come up with the um, cash flow statement? So, we have the... Kasi sa uh, cash flow statement, yung cash mo, ikaklassify mo into operating activities, financing activities, investing activities. So, ano-ano yung ibig sabihin ng 
uh, operating activities. So yung mga inflows and outflows pertaining to the operation of the business, yung primary purpose ng business, merchandising ba yan, or service ba yan, or manufacturing ba yan. So when we talk about operating activities, anong composition yan? Current assets and current liabilities. Except marketable securities. So, current asset and current liabilities, application and disposition of these two, two accounts are, or the, these two groups of accounts are for operating activities. Itong non-current asset ay para sa investing activities plus the marketable securities, although current asset is also considered as mar investing activities. So, marketable securities and non-current asset. So, that is investing activities. Financing activities refers to non-current liabilities and equity. So, pag sinabi mo kasi financing activities, saan ba nang gagaling ang source ng pera mo? Saan mo rin ba ina-apply? So, pag sinabi mong financing, ha, uh, pera na nagra-run ng business yan para umandar yung business mo. So, issuance of bonds, issuance of shares of stocks, uh, long-term of loan obligations. So, these are non-current activities and uh, non-current liabilities and activities that is, uh, which are considered financing activities. So, investing naman, you're putting up something for future use. So, itong non-current asset for future use. Pag nabenta mo yung non-current asset mo, maaaring kumita ka dyan. So, marketable securities, pwede kang kumita dyan. So, saan ka pwede kumita other than operating? Okay? So, yun yung components of cash flow statement. Kailangan i-classify mo ang mga accounts ng, uh, ang mga sources ng cash and disposition ng cash into operating, investing, and financing activities. Para maunawaan mo, ah, malaking kita, ang kita, malaki ang kita ko sa pag-operate, ah, malaking kita ko sa pag-invest, malaki yung, uh, ah, yung, pin yung source ng, ano ko, ng, ng business ko, more on liabilities or more on issuance of shares of stock. So, ma-analyze mo yung uh, net income mo or cash mo kung saan mo dinala. Para ini-explain mo lang talaga kung saan mo dinala yung cash at saan nanggaling yung cash. So, eto na tayo sa uh, operating activities. Current assets except marketable securities. So, current asset and current liabilities. So, current asset and current liabilities. Hindi ata nalagay. So, dalawang current current assets, current liabilities, except lang dun sa current assets yung marketable securities kasi nakapasok yan sa financing activity. So, operating activities. Receipt from sales of goods and services, interest payments, income tax payments, payments made to supplier of goods, and services used in production, salary and wage payments to employees, rent payments, any other type of operating expenses and income. Yun yung uh, operating activities. So investing, non-current asset lang siya. Pero kasama yung marketable Securities. Yung pinanggal natin dun sa current asset na marketable securities from operating, ilalagay natin sa investing. So, tatandaan nyo yan paano gumawa. 
investing activities, purchase of fixed assets, purchase of investments such as stocks or securities, cash lending money, sale of fixed assets, sale of investment securities, except na lang tong investment securities uh, kung uh, seller of securities siya. So, kung seller of securities siya, stockbroker siya, eh di ano yan, magiging operating. Pero dito sa assumption na to, hindi ito ang business niya. Ang business niya might be merchandising or uh, rental business, but not uh, a stockbroker. Kasi kung ito na yung inventaryo mo, then this becomes an operating activity. Collection of loans and insurance proceeds. So these are the examples of investing activities. Okay, components of cash flow statement. We have the non-current liabilities and equity. So ito yung mga talagang uh, sources ng iyong uh, pamumuhunan. Loans, non-current loans. Kasi kung current yan, nasa operating yan, yung mga accounts payable. Pero, pero mga long-term loan obligations that is part of the financing activity. And so, and so is issuance of shares of stock in corporation or additional capital from partners or owners in case of partnership and sole proprietorship. So, financing activities include dividend payments, stock repurchases, bond offerings, and generating cash. Pero kung ano yan, sole proprietorship yan, additional investment, uh, drawings, at saka um, admission of new partner. Methods of computing cash flow. So, there are two methods of computing for cash flow. Um, for presenting the cash flow statement, direct method and indirect method. I've already discussed the direct method. Yung sinabi ko kanina na ang babasihan natin ay yung cash ledger natin or yung cash account. Doon natin titignan yung mga data to come up with the analysis on on the analysis of cash short, uh, sources and application. So, direct method, dun mo mismo titignan sa cash ledger. So, direct method, beginning balance, ending cash balance, increase, decrease in cash. So, ito lang yung titignan natin, yung increase, decrease in cash. Yan ang i-explain natin whether that is a direct method or an indirect method. You have to come up with the same increase, decrease in cash. Same ending cash balance for that matter. So, ito yung ano natin. Uh, this is the direct method. So, cash flow of the Rimacore drugstore using the direct method. So, ang ina-analyze natin yung cash account. Ano-ano ba na sa cash account? So, ito yung mga data sales, unearned revenue, accounts receivable, common stock. So, alin dyan sa mga yan ang sources ng cash so, anong total niya? Tapos, ano pa? Sales. Magkano yung natanggap? Etong na lagay ay 440,000. Cash received from customers. So, ano daw composition niyan? Customer natanggap. The sales, unearned revenue, tsaka accounts receivable. Collection of account, advanced collection of uh, revenue, at tsaka cash sales. So, itong tatlo na to, ang total niyan ay 440,000. So, cash receipts, cash received from customer. So, cash payments, saan ba in-apply yung uh, operation kasi tayo, di ba? Operating, so more on sales and operating expenses. So, ano-ano yung pinagamitan ng cash para sa operation? Meron tayong suppliers, employees, interest and income taxes. So, meron tayo yung 70,000, 120,000, 12,000, and 9,000. So, 
Yung pag tinotal natin yan, 211, i-deduct natin dito sa 440, we will arrive at 229,000. This is the cash, net cash provided by operating activities. Ito yung cash na nakuha natin sa operation. Now, bumili tayo ngayon. Uh, tingnan natin yung investing. So, saan ba natin in-apply? Saan tayo naglagay ng malaking pera? Sa property, plant, and equipment. And then, wala nang iba. Yun yung uh, pinag-ano natin. Doon nag-invest tayo doon. Bumili tayo ng malaking makinaya. Hindi part yan ng daily operation, pero that is an investment. Now, cash flow from financing activities. Yung capital, yung pamumuhunan, o kaya long-term loan, or loan obligation. So, meron tayong issuance of commons, shares of stock. Ito, application, ito, source. So, 200. Ang difference na 200, imaminus natin sa 229. So, we will have 29. So, the difference in cash is outflow and inflow is 29,000. So, this should be, this 29,000 should be the ending cash balance. Dapat mag-reconcile yan. So, anong cash balance natin yung January 1? 501,000. Anong cash balance natin yung December? 530,000. So, what is the ending cash balance? 29,000. So, tama yung ating statement of cash flow. Kasi reconciled itong 29,000 net cash inflow sa net increase in cash. So, kung net cash inflow yan, net increase in cash. Kung net cash outflow yan, edi net decrease in cash. Okay? Mas madaling gawin ang direct method kung titignan sa illustration. Pero sa totoong buhay, kasi voluminous yung transaction sa cash, eh. masyadong marami. So, mahirap mag-sort. That is why yung mga accountant mas pinaprefer nila ang indirect method. So let's see bakit sa indirect method eh. Pero mas maganda ito eh. Kasi nakikita mo talaga kung saan in-apply yung pera, saan nanggaling yung pera. Mas maganda yung analysis mo. Kasi sa indirect method, ganito yung presentation nila. <laughs> so ito na yung ating ano no. Using the direct method, we came up with this cash receipts, cash disbursement. Net cash provided by or inflow from operating. So we have this 300 um, investment dun sa property, plant, and equipment. So naka negative yan. And then issuance of common stock, which is 100,000. So that this increases the cash. So ang net effect ay uh, increase by 29,000. Ito yung beginning, ito yung ending. So, increase by 29. So, ito yung cash flow statement using um, direct method. Makikita nyo yung mga application nyo. Yun. Kapag nakikita nyo itong mga words na cash received to suppliers, to employees, yan, direct method yan. Ang isang method ay Indirect method. Sa indirect method, ito na makita nyo. Decrease, increase, 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 decrease. So, hindi naka-identify yung payment or receipt. Kundi increase, decrease because pinagkocombine yung beginning balance sa ending balance. So, ang difference nun, i-analyze nyo. Itong indirect method, um, Simple ang gawin para sa accountant, pero mahirap gamitin ng mga or users of information. So, ang pinaprefer talaga ng accounting standards board ay ang direct method. Kasi sa direct method, ma-evaluate mo talaga yung uh, sources and application of cash kasi naka-identify doon. Dito, madaling gawin ng accountant pero mahirap unawain ng bumabasa. Yung direct method, madaling unawain ng bumabasa pero mahirap para sa isang accountant because of the volume of transactions sa cash na ia-analyze mo, isa-summarize mo at ia-analyze mo. 
maaaring magkamali in the process yung accountant sa paggawa or pag-analyze sa dami ng vo- sa laki ng volume. Pero madaling basahin ng user. So, mamimili ka. Pero sa accounting standards board, ang pinefavor nila ay ang direct method, which is tama naman. Kasi ang purpose mo ay magbigay ng information eh. Hindi gumawa lang eh. Kailangan masatisfy mo yung babasa ng information. Pero ito yung common na ginagamit. Kasi yung direct, indirect ay indirect method ang, ang common na ginagamit. Kasi it, ang accountant yung gumagawa ay pipiliin niya yung mas madali para sa kanya. Kaya itong indirect method na lang. Kasi compare mo lang yung beginning at end, then you come up with your adjusted or ending balance ng cash. Eh, paano nga ba yan? Kung ako babasa, hindi ko rin maintindihan. O kung nagka-English yan, parang ginagawa natin uh, sobrang tagilo ng mga bumabasa, eh, hindi naman lahat accountant. So, Degrees in accounts receivable. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng degrees in accounts receivable? Nakolekta. So that is an application of, ay, application, source of cash. Kasi na, nabawasan yung accounts receivable mo, ibig sabihin, nakakolekta ka. Increase in inventory. Ginastos mo yung pera. So naka-negative yung sign. So nabawasan yung pera. Increase in accumulated depreciation. Tumaas yung expense mo, pero wala namang cash na involved dito. Therefore, you add it back. Ina-add mo sa net income. So, ang starting point ng direct method ay net income. Wala yan sa direct method. So, sa indirect method, ang starting point ay net income. Tapos, mag-a-arrive ka sa ending cash balance. Yun yung nga yung sinasabi ko na nire-reconcile mo yung net income dun sa cash balance mo. Dahil kung walang utang, pareho lang dapat dyan. So, increase in accounts payable. Ibig sabihin, dumami yung accounts payable mo. Dumami yung cash mo. Kasi nagkaroon ka ng source na para magkaroon ng cash. So, positive siya, no? Increase in wages payable. Ibig sabihin, nagamit mo yung pera hindi mo binayad yung pera, hindi mo inapply yung pera. So, na-retain yung pera sa sa'yo. So, hindi mo siya imaminus. Decrease in interest payable. Ibig sabihin, nabawasan yung utang mo, nagbayad ka. So, negative yung sign. Ito, yung increase in inventory, bumili ka inventory, negative. Decrease in income tax payable. Ibig sabihin, nagbayad ka ng tax mo. Uh, so, increase in unearned revenue. Ano ibig sabihin? Dumami yung utang mo uli, ibig sabihin, nagkaroon ka ng cash kasi advance payment yun eh. So, nakakolekta ka ng cash. So, ang total nitong lahat ng ito, ang tawag ay net cash provided by operation. So, i-add mo yan sa net income. Next will be application, property, plant, and equipment bumili. So, ang tawag dyan ay investing activity. Dahil bumili ka, nabawasan yung cash. So, negative yung sign. Common stocks issued, ibig sabihin, nag-issue ka, nagka-pera ka. So, that is financing activity. So, pag tinotal mo itong lahat at in mo doon or minus mo, depende kung negative or positive yan, the difference will be your cash inflow or outflow during the year. So, dapat balance siya doon sa net increase ng cash, which is 29,000. So, tama yung cash flow statement. Doon mo malalaman kung tama yung cash flow statement mo. Kung the difference ng beginning at ending cash ay equal doon sa net cash inflow or outflow mo during the year. So, very, ano, very interesting gawin, ano, kung pag-aaralan mo lang. Madali yung indirect method. Kailangan, alam mo yung ibig sabihin ng increase-decrease. Nag-increase sa receivable, ibig sabihin, ano, ibig sabihin, nagkaroon ka ng cash. 
Okay. I'm sorry. Nag-increase ng receivable, ibig sabihin, nabawasan yung cash mo. Nag-decrease yung receivable, ibig sabihin, nakakolekta ka, nadagdagan yung cash mo. So, lahat ng items sa, na yan, sa current, ay i-analyze mo into increase, decrease. And then, ano ba yung effect niyan dun sa net income? So, lahat ng mga increase in expenses na hindi naman nagre-require ng cash outflow, i-add back mo. Oo, nadagdagan yung expense mo, eh hindi naman yan, ano eh, hindi naman yan cash. So, i-add back mo dun para maka-arrive ka sa cash basis of net income. Eh, yung mga uh, expenses not requiring cash ay ina-add back kasi yung accrual basis net income ay i-reconcile na din sa cash basis net income. So, ito yung comparative balance sheet. Ito yung pinagkuhanan ng mga data na yan. So, yung cash, accounts receivable, yan. De uh, decrease in accounts receivable by 30,000. Galing yan dito. Sa 2018 at 2019, ang difference ay 30,000. And so on and so forth. Itong inventory, uh, 2019, 50,000, 2018. So, nag-increase ibig sabihin bumili ka. Okay? Ganun lang yun. Increase, decrease. 2018, 2019, increase, decrease, nandito effect. So, gagamitin pa rin natin yung classification na financing is um, liability, long-term liability, um, financing, operating current asset and current liabilities. Operating current asset and current liabilities. Um, investing non-current asset. Except um, marketable securities. So, which is non-current asset but, but part of the um, investing activities. Then financing activities will be long-term liabilities and capital accounts. Tatandaan nyo. Yun lang naman tatandaan nyo sa cash flow statement eh yung classification ng mga accounts. So, ano to? So, kapag indirect method ang magsisimula ka sa net income. So, kailangan sa indirect method, kailangan mo ng income statement at saka comparative balance sheet to come up with kailangan mo income statement and comparative balance sheet to come up with a cash flow statement. Wala kang comparative balance sheet, hindi ka makakagawa using indirect method. Pero makakagawa ka using direct method. So, uh, sa direct method, hindi ito kailangan. Ang kailangan lang natin ay cash ledger or cash account. Kung ano yung mga entrada ba. Okay. Ito yung ano, mga effects-effects ko na hindi umandar. So, makikita niyo yung mga araw-araw na ayaw umanda. So, we are done discussing this item. So, let's go to the next. Ito na yung mas magandang presentation using indirect method. So, ito yung indirect method of cash flow statement. Ito yung net income. Wala tayong net income sa direct. Sa indirect, magsisimula tayo sa net income. Tapos, nandito na yung increase, decrease. So, increase in account receivable, increase in inventory, so, and so on and so forth. Increase, decrease. Increase, decrease in current liabilities. Increase, decrease in current asset that become sure operating activities. Increase, decrease in um, increase, decrease in non-current asset and marketable securities that become sure. Uh, hindi pa operating. Finan or investing. This is investing. Investing activities. Increase, decrease in long-term liabilities and capital accounts that become sure financing activities. So the difference will be the 
uh, net or this will be the ending cash balance or net income using cash basis. So that ends our discussion. I hope you were able to learn something from this and we'll discuss the two remaining topics which are closing entries and reversing entries. Dapat um, maunang i-discuss yung closing entries and reversing entries sa financial statements eh. Pero sa cycle kasi nasa dulo sila. So we'll discuss that with then dun sa cycle. I hope you learned something from this and God bless. Keep safe. Bye-bye.